Hi everyone, welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our preparatory ground instruction for instrument flying, exercise 24. These exercises are broken up into four different preparatory ground instructions uh, because uh, we talk about just instrument flying, we talk about unusual attitudes, a limited panel, and navigation aids. The last two are for uh, commercial pilot students. So the reason we cover this is because uh, you might be flying along, you're, you have a VFR, um, license or no instrument rating and then all of a sudden you find yourself in cloud and you, you have to figure out a way to get out of the crummy predicament that you've got yourself in so that's why we're going to be uh, covering this and you're covered this in flight so let's uh, review some instruments first off we have our control instruments so the attitude indicator and tachometer we have our performance indicator uh, instruments, heading indicator, airspeed indicator, altimeter, and vertical speed indicator. So one tells us uh, where we are basically in space, uh, your attitude indicator, and then the other one's kind of where we're going, how the aircraft's performing. So what we do uh, if we end up in cloud is, and, and, this, and this goes for everybody, this goes not just for a private pilot that's inadvertently in cloud, but also an instrument rated pilot, is we have this thing called a selective radial scan. And so the way to think of this selective radial scan is a hub and spoke system. And the hub uh, is usually the attitude indicator. And then we go from the hub to various different spokes. So for example, here's the attitude indicator and we're in straight and level flight or in a turn, we're going to look at the attitude indicator, altimeter, attitude indicator, heading indicator, attitude indicator, altimeter. And always, you're always going back and forth to the hub, always coming back. You're looking at each instrument for maybe a second. And then every so often, you're just looking at the other instruments. So uh, let's say every five cycles or so, I look at the airspeed, just make sure it's still good. Turn coordinator, vertical speed indicator, just engine instruments, other sorts of things. But in straight and level flight and turns, it's the, the selective radial scan is the attitude indicator and then the, together with the altimeter and heading indicator. If we're doing climbs and descents, again, the attitude indicator is our focus. And then we're constantly referencing our airspeed indicator and our heading indicator. So for example, we're going to fly, look at the attitude indicator, airspeed, attitude, heading, attitude, airspeed. Then every so often we're going to look at the altimeter and vertical speed indicator, as, especially as we're approaching our level off uh, uh, altitude. Let's talk about the flight test. Uh, the examiner is going to expect you to fly uh, with the those foggles on or whatever you use at your flying school. You're going to maintain straight and level flight for two minutes, do a 180 degree turn at a rate one turn, and then fly straight and level for another two minutes. You're expected to maintain 15 degrees heading, 200 feet of altitude, and 15 knots of airspeed. Okay. This turn that we're talking about, just do a rate one turn on your uh, attitude indicator, or sorry, your, a rate one turn on your uh, turn coordinator. So this completes uh, this lesson. Uh, there's quite a bit more when we talk about illusions and things like that that's covered in your ground school. So I'm going to encourage you to, to if you haven't watched that, make sure you watch that and really understand these illusions and, and, uh, and do that uh, for this uh, lesson. Thanks for joining me.